You cannot build with untempered mortar. You cannot build with untempered mortar. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, or Kodash. All praises and glories definitely do. So once again, the title of this video will be, You Cannot Build with Untempered Mortar. Untempered mortar makes a lousy adhesive. Of course, we're going to go into untempered mortar. <clears throat> what is untempered mortar? And uh, this is a response to, um, as of late, Elder Apostle Ta'an, Elder Apostle Ramla, through the Spirit, been going heavy at uh, uh, Bishop Nathaniel and his latest breakdown of the mark of the beast, which he says is the mark of Cain. And that's the thing with this group. They're always changing their breakdowns. Let's go back to uh, the time of Jacob's trouble. They had one breakdown for that, then they changed that. Uh, even before that, the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. They have a different breakdown for that. And now, as of late, very recently, you've heard, those of you who have seen the video, you've heard, you've, you've heard uh, Bishop Nathaniel say that the mark of the beast is the mark of Cain. All right? So, periodically, beginning with their leader at the IUIC, they're always changing the doctrine. And there's a reason for that. Do you know why? Because they are building with untempered mortar. Now, by the time you finish see this video, you're going to consider why uh, in the scriptures it speaks about untempered mortar. Case in point, the book of Ezekiel, the 13th chapter, and why the Heavenly Father said, those that build with untempered mortar, he's going to knock the wall down, he's going to knock the building down. Okay? Um, before I go into Ezekiel, the 13th chapter, let me just show you that we are the Heavenly Father's building. Uh, that is uh, 1 Corinthians. Really, right now, we're supposed to be building the house of David. Okay? Spiritually, we're supposed to be building the house of David, the tabernacle of David, right? Now, the Apostle Paul said that we are the Heavenly Father's building. Okay? This is the book of 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the ninth verse, right? He said, for we are laborers together with the Heavenly Father, which his name is Yahweh and the Son's name is Yahweh Shai. Ye are God's husbandry. Now, what's a husbandry? What's a husband? A husband is a planter, a farmer. When you look the word up, right? So basically, what the Apostle Paul is saying here, we are the plants of the Lord. Now, that lines up with Psalms, the first chapter. Let me show you what Psalms, the first chapter says. Okay. Uh, Psalms, the first chapter, and um, I'll start at the second verse, Psalm 1 and 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And that's us that have been called into this truth, right? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. What's the rivers of water? This knowledge, this truth, which starts with Yahweh Shai. Remember Yahweh Shai told that woman, I, I will uh, um, I will give you the uh, how do you say it? I'm trying to remember how he said it. I will I would give you the uh, rivers of living water. And then the woman said, "The well the well is the well is too deep. I have nothing to draw it with." He wasn't talking about the water of the well. He was talking about knowledge. You know, the, which is only given to the nation of Israel anyway. Okay, that's why he told the woman, go and call, go and call your husband. Okay, because she wasn't an Israelite. Okay. Anyway, uh, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So in Psalm 1 and 3, it's using the tree as an analogy for people, right? In this case, people that have been called into the truth, you know, individuals like us, we're like a tree planted by rivers of water. 
So going back to the word husbandry, that's what husbandry is. A husband is a farmer, a planter who plants, you know, who plants uh, 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 trees and eventually they grow and they bring forth fruit. So again, we are laborers together with the Heavenly Father. Ye are the Most High's husbandry. Now here's the point. Ye are God's building. So we're the building. So if, the, if we're the building, we got to build with mortar that stick. All right. We cannot build with untempered mortar. Now we're going to get into the definition of untempered mortar. And you're going to see why uh, uh, Bishop Nathaniel has to periodically keep changing his doctrine. Because it's, it's not going to stick. It's untempered mortar. You see, when you teach the truth, it sticks. Once you teach the truth, that's it. Okay, but if you're teaching lies mixed in with the truth, that is untempered mortar. That makes for a poor adhesive. Okay, and eventually whatever you've built with it, eventually will come tumbling down. Okay, um, let's go to the 16th verse. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, which his name is Yahweh, right? We're the temple. And right now, the temple that's being built is the tabernacle of David. That's pursuant to Amos 9 and 11, right? That's the prophecy, right? The Lord is building the tabernacle of David, the house of David, right? Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Heavenly Father, and that the Spirit of the Heavenly Father dwelleth in you? So that's the point. So now, let's go to Ezekiel, the 13th chapter. And uh, we're going to start at the ninth verse. You know what? We're going to start the 8th verse. Ezekiel 13 and 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, because you have spoken vanity and seen lies. Now, a great example of that with this group is how they break down Revelation 13, 16 to 17. Now they're saying that the mark of the beast is the mark of Cain. That is untempered mortar. Okay, that is that is grossly incorrect. Okay. Uh, because you have spoken vanity and seen lies. And that's exactly what it is. Their breakdown of the Re of uh, Revelation 13 and 16, Revelation 13, 16 to 17 is vanity and lies. It's the incorrect breakdown. Okay. Therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God, which his name is Yahweh. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that have seen or that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. And that's in the kingdom, right? Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord power. And he's talking about when Yahweh Shai comes to gather the elect. Because they're going to enter into the land of Israel later when they come back as, you know, as the, uh, the two-thirds. You know, the, the two-thirds that die... This is pursuant to Zechariah 13 and 8. says two-thirds shall be cut off. The two-thirds are going to come back through the one-third. That's going to make it. They're going to be the children of the one-third. That's why in the book of Romans 11 and 26, it says all Israel shall be saved. The Apostle Paul said that. So right now, the Lord is only saving the one-third, Zechariah 13 and 8. The two-thirds that die, they're going to come back through the one-third in the kingdom. Okay? So... Moving on, it says, because even because they have seduced my people, and that's what that's what uh, uh, Bishop Nathaniel is doing. He's seducing his his uh, his uh, students. He's seducing his, his people, the people that watch him. He's seducing them with with uh, the, uh, vanity and lies. He's not telling them the real truth concerning, for whatever reason, we believe the main reason is he sold out. That's why now he has, he has to come up with this new breakdown of the mark of the beast being the mark of Cain. That is grossly incorrect. And you notice, right, which proves he's seducing uh, the people. He never went into the Greek word. He never went into the Greek word for mark in Revelation 13 and 16 and correctly break that down. Okay, so it's a seduction. Okay, it's a seduction because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace. And one built up a wall 
and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. So it ain't just Bishop of Daniel who's building up that wall. Here comes the, his other sycophants, right? His, his, his flatterers, if you will, that, that are helping him build that untempered, uh, build that wall with untempered mortar. Okay? Uh, so now let's go into untempered mortar because what happened was you got to get an understanding of what untempered mortar is. So what I did was I typed in what is, what is the definition of untempered mortar? And here it is right here. We, uh, based on the word untempered, right? It says used of mortar in Ezekiel 13, 10 to 15, 22 to 28. To fell probably refers to mortar made with clay instead of slake or slaked lime. In the interior of Palestine and Syria, walls are still commonly built of small stones or mud bricks and then smeared over with clay mortar. The surface is rubbed smooth and is attractive in appearance. Uh, yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> like that like that wacky breakdown that Bishop Daniel is coming with, it appears smooth and attractive in appearance. His students, they like to hear that. They like to hear his breakdown of Revelation 13, 16. One individual said, Bishop Nathaniel has the greatest breakdown of Revelation 13, 16 to 17. I was watching Elder Apostle's video and, and, and he said that, right? He said, uh, he said that uh, one individual had put a comment he was reading an, a comment from one of the individuals, I, I guess from that page where Bishop Nathaniel, you know, is going into the, the mark of B saying it's the mark of Cain. One, in the, one simple minded individual put that comment. Bishop Nathaniel has the greatest breakdown of the mark of the beast, Revelation 13, 16 to 17. Well, there you go. Uh, it says the surface is rubbed smooth and is attractive in appearance. This coating prolongs the life of the wall, but requires yearly attention if the wall is to stand. See? Did you catch that? All right, let's read that again. It says, in the interior of Palestine and Syria, walls are still commonly built of small stones or mud bricks and then smeared over with clay mortar. Okay? The surface, instead of, uh, instead of mortar, mortar made with with uh, slaked lime, which is the correct kind of mortar, they're using mortar made with clay, and yes, clay does have a smooth, uh, a smooth appearance. Okay. Um. The surface is, um, there's, a, there's a scripture where it speaks about clay. Shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Let's get that. The potter's clay. Bear with me for a minute. The potter's clay. Uh, shall be esteemed. You know what? Because this kind of reminds you of the lies that Esau is coming with. The Bible equates it to potter's clay. Okay? Clay is, clay is not a strong adhesive. That's why when you go into the image that uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw, right? That giant image. The, uh, the feet, right? The, the feet was made of what? It, it was mixed with uh, clay and miry iron. I'm sorry, miry, I said it backwards. Miry clay and iron, which is a poor adhesive. Okay. It is right here. Daniel, the second chapter, and the 33rd verse. Let's just go to the point. His legs of iron, his feet 
part of iron and part of clay, which, which, which makes a pore adhesive, iron and clay. And what does that mean in today's terms? That's talking about the EU, all right, the, the uh, European Union and their member nations. You got certain nations that are strong and you got certain nations that are weak. And it's hindering, it's hindering Esau's empire, okay? It's hindering Esau's empire from, from uh, becoming one and forming the so-called New World Order, okay? When you look at the EU, also known as NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, look at the member nations. You have some that are strong, you have some that are weak, okay? They're not all strong. So that is the, uh, and, and plus, by the way, uh, that breakdown of that I just gave you, Nate broke that down wrong. The part where it says his legs of iron, his feet, part of iron and part of clay. He was, he, he, I think his breakdown, if I remember correctly, was something to do with race wars, Esau fighting against Jake, something like that, which that has nothing to do with it. It goes back to the EU and their member nations. You know, some nations are strong financially and some nations are weak financially. OK, and we've done plenty of videos on that. But the point I'm making is iron mixed with clay is not a strong adhesive. So that image that Daniel saw was destined to fall. As a matter of fact, um, when uh, when you read the next verse, thou sawest till that a stone was cut without hands. Who's that stone? Yahweh Shai is that stone. Another title for Yahweh Shai is the stone, the great millstone, right? Thou sawest till that till a stone was cut out with, without hands, which smote the image upon his feet. Why? Because, wait a minute, that was the weakest part of the image. The feet, the legs, and the feet were mixed with what? Were mixed with clay. They were iron mixed with clay. And like I said, it goes back to the member nations, which, which represents... The Roman Empire, the member nations, right? EU, which some of them are strong, some of them are weak. That's what that means. So the stone that was cut, that's Yahweh coming back. We're in that time now. Yahweh and the angels are about to invade this, this planet Earth and destroy East, the Esau's power. Destroy NATO, destroy the EU, all of that garbage. That's what you re that's what you're hearing about here. Uh, Daniel 2 and 34, thou sawest till, till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet. A stone that was cut without hands, that kind of reminds you of what uh, Ezra said when he saw Yahweh Shai in the vision. He saw Yahweh Shai in that chariot. His chariot looked like a mountain. A mountain is made out of stone. But Ezra said he was looking for where the mountain was cut, but he couldn't find it. Because it, was, it wasn't an actual mountain. It was a chariot. It was a so-called UFO. But it looked like a mountain. That's why Esdras described it as a mountain. It was so huge. So that kind of reminds you of what is written here. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet. Yeah, when Yahweh Shai comes, Isaiah 63 and 1. When Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to destroy Esau society. Okay, Isaiah 63 and 1. Which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Because it's very hard. Solid iron is very hard to break to break solid iron into pieces. But if the iron is mixed with clay now, it's it's easy. And that that is what uh these guys at the IUIC are building with. They're building with clay. They're building with clay. They're building with untempered mortar. Untempered mortar is made with clay. It's not made with slake lime, which is a better adhesive. Okay? It's not made with slake lime. It's made with clay, untempered mortar. So eventually, the building is going to fall. Just like Daniel's image eventually fell. The legs were made with what? Iron and clay? Well... The IUIC is building with clay, okay? Part of their doctrine is right. Part of their doctrine is wrong. The whole doctrine is supposed to be correct. 
Okay, the whole doctrine is supposed to be 100% spot on, man. Okay, let's read some more. In the interior of Palestine and Syria, walls are still commonly built of small stones or mud bricks and then smeared over with clay mortar. The surface is rubbed smooth and is attractive in appearance, like Nate's doctrine. This coating pr prolongs the life of the wall, but requires yearly attention if the wall is to stand. And that's why this guy constantly changes his doctrine. Because it's, it's made with untempered water. Ezekiel uses the practice. Listen good. Ezekiel uses the practice to typify the work of false prophets. They build up stories and make them plausible by an outward semblance to the truth. Just like that clay. That clay mortar. Oh yeah, it's smooth. But it doesn't last long. You have to keep, you have to continually nurture it. It doesn't last long. It's attractive, but it doesn't last long. Okay? Ezekiel uses the practice to typify the work of false prophets. They build up stories and make them plausible by an outward semblance to truth. While in fact, they are flimsy. Listen good. They are flimsy, unreliable prophecies, like his breakdown of Revelation 13, 16 to 17. It's flimsy and unreliable. It doesn't make sense. You know, recently, oh, the mark of the beast is the mark of Cain. Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, we don't have the name of the Heavenly Father. Meanwhile, every now and then you say Yahweh Shai, and you throw Yahweh Shai in with all these other names. That is untempered mortar, man. I mean, what more What more proof do you need, you people out there? Especially you people in the IUIC. What more proof do you need? You can't see that this dude is seducing you with untempered mortar? And pursuant to the prophecy in Ezekiel, the 13th chapter, the Lord is going to... We're going to read it. The Lord is going to destroy it, man. That's why I keep telling you guys, the Lord is going to destroy that group. He's going to dismantle that group. IUIC is going to break it apart. He's going to extract his elect pursuant to Amos 9 and 9. I will sift the house of the house of Jacob, like it says. He's going to sift his elect from that group and the rest he's going to do away with them. Okay? It's, it's just that simple. You will see this. You will see this. Okay? Let's read on. Ezekiel uses the practice to typify the work of false prophets. They build up stories and make them plausible by an outward appearance or outward semblance to truth. While, in fact, they are flimsy, unreliable prophecies resembling the walls described above. Right, exactly. There's the connection. You know, when you build a wall, you really should use slake line. That is tempered mortar. But when you build with untempered mortar, you use clay instead of slake line. Okay, the doctrine that Nate is coming with is clay. That's that clay doctrine. It's smooth in appearance. But it doesn't last. It's it's a poor adhesive. And we found that out with the with the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw. The legs was mixed with what? Iron and clay. Clay is a poor adhesive, man. You don't mix iron with clay. <laughs> no wonder that image fell to pieces when that when that stone hit it. And the stone is Yahweh Shai. The stone is <clears throat> excuse me. The stone is about to hit that group, man. The stone is about to hit that 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 group okay i'm a little excited ezekiel uses the practice to typify the work of false prophets they build up stories and make them plausible by an outward semblance to truth while in fact they are flimsy unreliable prophecies resembling the walls described above which can be broken down <laughs> oh my goodness oh no oh no oh no which can be broken down by a push or a heavy rainstorm now guess what the storm is coming you know, years ago, Alex Jones made a video called Terror Storm. One of the things he discussed in that he discussed in that video was the coming of the concentration camps. All right, the detention centers and the mandatory implantation of that. You know what? So when that is fully in place, which it will be, that's like Elder Pastor been saying. That's when you're going to see a lot of these IUIC guys. They're going to be scrambling, looking for answers because they've been taught wrong because they've been building their house with untempered mortar. Now, I'm reading this, right? It says, resembling the walls described above, which can be broken down by a push or a rainstorm. 
One scripture comes to mind. The, the winds blew. Let me get that. And then we're going to go into what the Lord have said about they that build with untempered mortar. We're going to read those scriptures in the book of Ezekiel, the 13th chapter. And that's going to be the video. The point has been made. I don't have to keep uh, beating on it. You know, uh, the winds blew because that was powerful. What, what uh, it is right here. What was said here, what was said here, in fact, they are flimsy, unreliable prophecies. That's what your untempered mortar is, resembling the walls described above, which can be broken down by a push or a heavy rainstorm. Yeah, what kind of wall is it where you, you just push it and, and you can crack it, you can break it, man? What kind of wall is that, man? That ain't no wall. <laughs> how, do you, how do you expect to put weight on that wall? You have something, those of you who know about building, right? Uh, uh, when you're building a structure, you have something called a bearing wall. You know why it's called a bearing wall? Because it carries most of the weight, okay? So how the hell can a bearing wall be made out of, <laughs> be made out of clay? What kind of building is that? Nate is no builder, man. He is certainly not a builder. He might be a destroyer, but he's not a builder. Matthew 7 and... Uh, 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these words, these sayings of mine, this is how I speaking, right? And doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And you better believe this wise man didn't use untempered mortar. Built his house upon a rock, meaning what? Meaning his doctrine was solid. All right, his doctrine was solid. Okay. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. There you go, man. He had a solid doctrine. Okay, he had a solid doctrine. So he was able to withstand the storm. And that's what that's why we that's why the Holy Spirit is upon us. The Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bar Shimia Shah is upon us, beginning fell the apostle down, down to teach you brothers here at Great Millstone the right truth. The 100% truth, the solid doctrine. So when the hell comes, when that storm comes, you'll be able to weather it because you've been prepared for it. You've been prepped for it. They're not doing that over there at the IUIC. All right? They're using flimsy, what does it say over here? They're using flimsy, unreliable prophecies. That's what they're using. Untempered mortar. Okay? Uh and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, like that certain group, shall be likened unto a foolish man <laughs> which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And that's what's going to happen with, your, with that group, you, you, the IUIC, and not just them, all these groups, because they ain't the only group using untempered mortar. Uh, 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 one body it used to be one body in Yahweh Shai. I guess now it's just one body. They're another example using untempered mortar. Who else? Um, ISUPK, they're using untempered mortar. What is untempered mortar? Flimsy, unreliable prophecies. There you go. So now let's see the judgment of untempered mortar, what the Heavenly Father has said. Uh, Ezekiel 13. Let me see. Give me a moment. We're going to read Ezekiel 13, 10 to 15, uh, 22 and 28. All right, so let's read the 10th verse to the 15th verse. We're going to read it real quick. Because even because they have seduced my people, say in peace, when there is no peace. Remember for a time, Nate, uh, he uh, rejected the, uh, the, the prophecy of the, um, the time of Jacob's trouble. He literally said there would, no, there would not be no time of Jacob's trouble. He literally said that. Now, recently, he has changed it. So, once again, that untempered mortar needs attention. Because <laughs> it's, it's flimsy and unreliable. But let's move on. Peace, and there, is, and there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. That's what they do it over there, that group. Say unto them which daubed it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. And that's, wait, wait a minute, that's the spirit that's on us. Begin to fell the apostle on down. We're, we're trying to tell these guys at the IUIC, look, the Lord is going to dismantle your group. You are not teaching correctly. You're not breaking down 
the, the uh, prophecies correctly, especially the most important prophecy on the table right now, which is the mark of the beast. You are not giving your, your, your students the correct information concerning the mark of the beast. You're simply not. All right. You're using that untempered mortar. Say unto them, which daubed it with untempered mortar. You're smoothing out that clay. Yeah, it looks pretty smooth. You know, when you watch this group, the IUIC, they got that set. Like Elder Pastor was saying, they got the little, the little lions on the table and the, and what else? You know, Nate is dressed like he like he's a starship commander. You know, what else? Uh, you got the, the little lion heads in the back with the swords coming down through them. You know, and they got the, they got the, the fake gold and all of that. See, that's what draws the people in. They're mesmerized by that. You know, they, 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 like the song from uh, uh, the, the group, the Guess Who, American Woman. Colored lights can hypnotize, sparkle someone else's eyes. That's what you see with these guys. They're sparkling. They're shining. Surely the Most High got to be with them because they're sparkling. They're shining. You know, they, they, uh, uh, the, uh, look at the leader. He's sharply dressed. You know, like the song from ZZ Top, Sharp Dressed Man. Every girl crazy about a sharp dress, man. You know, he's a sharp dressed dude. The Lord got to be with him. His doctrine got to be on point. All the sparkles are there, and this dude is sharp and he's glistening. <laughs> Meanwhile, you have GMS. Look at them. They look like they crawled out of a sewer. <laughs> they, look, they look like the, uh, what was that? The, there was a, these two dudes from Brooklyn. There was, um, Oh man, there were it's these two rappers. Yeah, uh, damn. They look they, most of their their their, their videos. They, they they would shoot it looking like they were in the sewer. There's two cats from Brooklyn. I forgot the name of the rap group. Maybe you, maybe you, you brothers who have an idea what I'm talking about. Maybe you can help me out. Um, damn man, they, they had a couple of good songs too. I forgot their name right now. Well, that's what GMS looked like. We we looked like we crawled out the sewer. But but that's okay, you know, because the Lord said that we would wear what? Rough garments. Okay? We would wear we would wear rough garments. Um Revelation Revelation 11 and 3, the, uh, clothed in what? Sackcloth. Okay? Clothed in sackcloth. What what what, what is a sackcloth? It's a garment of of mourning because right now we're in a state of mourning, man. We're kitchen hell, you know. Anyway, let's move on. Say unto them which daubed it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. So there you go. There shall be an overflowing shower, and an o and ye o great hailstones shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Yeah, again, when when all hell breaks loose, when when the time of Jacob's trouble come, that that group is going to fall apart. Lo, when the wall is fallen. Shall it not be said unto you, where is the daubing <laughs> wherewith ye have daubed it? Yeah, what happened to that smooth uh, uh, untempered mortar that, that you were using to put, your, to put your doctrine together? What happened to it? Especially you, Paul Kersey. All right. When, 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 the, when the Heavenly Father breaks apart the IUIC, man, I'm going to come see you, man. All right. Just know that, all right? I'm, I'm letting you know right now. I'm letting you know right off the rip, my dude. When, <laughs> my dude, when Yahweh Hashim Yahshai rends that, that group, which he will do, I'm going to come see you, man. And I want you to tell me what, what happened to the IUIC. I want you to tell me face to face. You heard? Anyway, let's read on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury. And there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. Yeah, because you know what you know what proved that the Heavenly Father is mad at that group? Look at how you're treating his name. You're treating his name like a side bitch, man. You're treating the name of the of the, 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 the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father? When the scriptures say kiss the son, least he be angry, you are treating his name like he, like he's a side bitch? You guys are crazy, man. You dudes are crazy, man. The last video I did, straight up the dude said, where, where, where's say over there? Where's say over there? He, he brought out Matthew 1 and 21. It said Jesus. It said Jesus over there. What did it say over there? Jesus. It said Jesus. <laughs> you guys are crazy, man. You're consumed with, with pride and vanity, man. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. So will I break down the wall that you have daubed with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground. Ooh, 
so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered. Yeah, all that skullduggery you guys are doing over there at the IUIC. You know, you making, like it says, Yahweh said about the, 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 uh, the hypocritical Pharisees, how they make the outside look good, but the inside is rotten. All that shit that you guys are doing over there, all of that's going to be exposed. It's all going to come out. You know, recently, little little here and there is, has been coming out about your group. You had that one member, you, you guys called him the pocket because he was covetous of, of his, uh, of his, um, his uh, resources, which is in violation of the law. Thou shall not cover another, is it not written? Thou shall not cover another man's ox, another man's ass, meaning his donkey. Thou shall not cover another man's wife. Thou shall not cover another man's goods. That's one of the, that's one of our staple laws. Meanwhile, you're the group that's always talking about the laws, the statutes, the commandments. You guys are a bunch of phonies, man. And like it says here, so will I break down the wall that you have daubed with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered and it shall fall and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yeah, that's when you're going to know the Most High's name. That's when you're going to stop playing them silly little games with the names of the Father and the Son, which his name is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. That's when you're going to stop playing those silly games. Okay, Nate, you already got a taste of it. When you was in that sunken place, you, you sure enough did reach for the name of the Father and the Son, didn't you? All of a sudden you got you got better. Now you're proud again. <laughs> Let's read on. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar and will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. So the day is coming when the IUIC will be no more. Not just them. All these other phony Israelite groups that are using untempered mortar, which is what? It's a metaphor for, uh, for, um, for flimsy, unreliable prophecies. All these different Israelite groups that are using flimsy, unreliable prophecies, which is untempered mortar, eventually that building is going to fall. Yahweh Shem is going to bring it down and he's going to bring wrath upon it too. So remember, 1 Peter 4 and 17, judgment is going to start where? With those that know that they are Israelites from the different Israelite groups. Okay? And then Ezekiel, the ninth, uh, what is it? The ninth chapter. You know, uh, slay ye utterly old and young. As you read on, it says, then they began at the ancient, um, then they began with the ancient men, meaning those that knew, knew they were Israelites. Okay? So this thing of ours is very serious, man. You can't be, look, sincerity and honesty that's what lasts in this truth sincerity and honesty untempered mortar is not sincere neither is it honest okay so hopefully you brothers and you few sisters out there learned something from this video and as usual it's on to the next one